I'm actually already pregnant. It's a very funny joke. Right? It's the newest Netflix hit, Moxie, and today on Houston Live, Lauren Kelly chats with two of the stars about what it was like working with Amy Poehler. And y'all, it's HL Obsessions Day, from game-changing men's clothing to a jewelry line perfect for working out, how you can save up to 15% off some of our favorite local small businesses. Plus, it is time for some spring cleaning, the design trend of cleaning you'll want to incorporate into your home all year round. And we're outside the home of one of Barbie's biggest fans as she celebrates her birthday today on National Barbie Day. We're going to tell you all about that and more here today on Houston Live. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Live starts now. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Happy National Barbie Day. Happy National Barbie Day. Who knew? Well, here's the thing. Do you know, I, I had a Barbie collection. It was quite large. Uh, it was hundreds of Barbie dolls, majority of which were still in the original box. Um, that's a small fortune. Yeah, but nobody buys them, trust me. I mean, I had them and trying to sell them, it was it was a total nightmare. There's not a, a resale market for them? Not, not really. But they allegedly have all this value, though. They really do, um, but trying to really reap the rewards from that collection was a little difficult and um, you know. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you put up signs that said like, Barbie doll yard sale? Come now. Come yes. now. You know what's funny is now all, there's no more garage sales anymore. They're right. all estate sales. Oh, because it sounds fancier. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> the, the good old days of a garage sale. But you know what's so funny is my mom is probably thinking, see, I told you. She's, she's a collector of things, Eileen. Um, and I, she really did not want to get rid of these Barbie dolls. But, but she, she turned around and there it went. When she you know? sold the house in Chicago, <laughs> she ditched the Barbie dolls. We just, yeah. You, I'm not a collector of... Anything. <laughs> you don't even like clothes in your closet. Listen, I've got to say the cure for being a collector. When I was in Idaho last month, okay. cleaning out my father's home, my back was killing me. As I was standing, going through stuff, he collected sugar bowls and all kinds of stuff. Do what you want, like do whatever brings you joy. I guess I've just realized that what brings me joy is not having a bunch of stuff that I need to go through. Well, Barbie really brings a lot of people joy. You know, she does. I mean, I have tons of memories playing with Amy, of my childhood friend, and so we, you know, the, the Barbie Dream House loved it. Couldn't believe I got it, and then the elevator pull it collapsed on top of me. Very traumatic. Clearly, I still remember it. The Barbie Corvette. But here's the thing: in 1959. The 11-inch tall bombshell Barbie mm. made her debut. Yeah. And the designer was actually the co-founder of Mattel, the, the creator the of toys, toy right? Uh -huh. So her name was Ruth Handler. Um, she was single in 1961, and that's when Ken... Ken came along. Came on the scene, but he still hadn't put a ring on it. Oh, that's true. Good point. Mm -mm. I had a Ken Barbie doll once. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I had Ken. Absolutely. You need Ken. Ken was great. Skipper. What he looked so cool. His name? shirt hanging open oh, and the yeah. Barbie convertible. Perfect hair. Perfect hair. Perfect hair. What was really cool, in 1992, Barbie became, uh, there was a Barbie for president. Uh, she also did a, there was an Oscar de la Renta uh, clothing line for Barbie. Uh, I think Bob Mackie, the original, the famed Bob Mackie that did all of Cher's costumes. Wasn't there like a Lucille Ball and yes, an Audrey Hepburn? Yes, the flight attendant. Like this iconic. It's hard to imagine, honestly, the world without Barbie because she's been around, you know, for most of us, most of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Good memories. And Eleanor Roosevelt, too. I know. So in honor of International Women's Day, which was yesterday, I guess uh, it was created. Look at the dress. Maya Angelou was added earlier this year, and we mentioned at the top of today's show, because it is National Barbie Day, Celebrating 62 years, Joe Sam is going to bring us this story um, at w the home of a woman who is probably the largest uh, Barbie collector, one of the largest Barbie collectors in in the country, in the See, world. See, I didn't know about her when I was getting rid of the collection, which would have been great to just, you know, ship it on over to her, but... What'd you do? Did you 
They didn't go in the trash, did they? They did not go in the trash. Okay, they you were donated. donated. Them. Yes, they were donated. Okay. And probably ripped open in their boxes that, you know, that's what every, every collector is probably passing out right now. But, you know, that that's the way it goes. Because they're more valuable in the box? Mm -hmm. So the ones that you had in the box you never actually played with? No, because those were the fancy ones. That was like the Christmas ones where she had these beautiful dresses on, the Bob Mackie designs with the headdress and all of these things. I even have my Barbie from uh, the Republican National Convention. You're kidding. No, still have it. They gave out Barbies? They did. Weird, right? I don't know. I covered, I was a reporter working that convention. Yeah, in Philadelphia. I just got a mug, the first union center in Philly. Yeah. You were there too? Got the Barbie. Did we Tol talk about this? I don't, I think we did. How I'm did telling I knock you. at the Barbie? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was in my room. I stayed in the wrong hotel. You certainly did. Listen, we missed you yesterday. Thank we you. really glad did. To glad to be back. Welcome back. I have some breaking news. Do I need to be ordained? What's going on? What? Ordained? Why would you need to be ordained? As a minister. No, to I, perform a wedding. I did not get engaged while okay. you were away. All right. It's What's almost it's almost as exciting as an <gasps> angel though. What? Did you get a dog? <laughs> <laughs> No? no? Okay, just tell me. I don't want to guess anymore. <laughs> no, we love dog sitting. If, if you all need a dog sitter, you let us know because we do love dogs. No, I started watching Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> I went from married, getting a dog, to Bridgerton. That was I the knew... farthest thing from my mind. Then what are you doing here? You should Listen, be home watching it. Well, we only have one episode left because there are you. only eight episodes. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you, I know we're late to the game. <sighs> <laughs> and you were busy this weekend. I had to really restrain, restrain myself from texting you. And oh my gosh, it is great. I understand why we talked about it in the context of uh, do not watch it with your parents. Do though. not. At and first I was thinking, my maybe episode one no. and two might be okay. Although that, like 30 seconds, seconds into episode one is a little bit, but five, six and seven, no. No, okay, we'll, we'll pass on that. So anyway, that is some news and it is a great show. A mom Welcome to the Bridgerton fan club. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to move quickly past that. So have you heard of some of the oddest um, Texas town names out there? Oddest or like, I like saying I'm Unexpected. going to Paris. Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas. Unexpected, right? Okay, so okay. there's a list of 40 towns featured in an article on clicktohouston.com. It's worth a read, so check it out. So it sort of inspired a game for us. Look at that barn. Isn't that That's beautiful? So pretty. I need a ranch. I need a ranch too. would be fun? <laughs> Oh, I don't wait. like to get dirty, oh, so that right. would be really weird, but anyway. Okay, so we have a little game. Here's how it's going to work. Okay. We each have a list of Texas towns with interesting names, unexpected. We're going to take turns um, trying to figure out how these towns got their names. Bonus points if we can pinpoint where each town is, and you're going to read the first name. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to go first. And I'm going to be terrible at this. No, you're going to be good. Okay. okay. Um, is it on my card? Where yeah. Oh, Dime Box, Texas? Um, dime box. Okay, how did it get its name? Because there were many dimes in boxes. No. Do you know where it is? Have you ever heard of it? I haven't. Okay. Texas is a very big state. I'm sorry. I'm still kind of new here. Five years. Residents once paid 10 cents per week for postal service. Mm. And it's just northeast of Giddings in eastern Lee County. Well, that's so lovely. 10 cents for postal service. Dime box. Did the mail actually arrive back then? Okay, my turn to read one to you. Okay. Frog knot. There's lots of frogs there, apparently. Or maybe there's none. There's frog not. Knots. Maybe not. Some say a strict schoolmaster forbade his students from bringing the frogs they captured to class with them. It's 22... Oh, where is it? No idea. <laughs> 22 miles from McKinney, Texas, north of Dallas. Okay. Okay, your turn. Okay, next one is going to be... Told you we'd be terrible at this. Loco, Texas. Loco, Texas. Not, don't say it's near me, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's your house. <laughs> the ping on your GPS. Um, Some place with a lot of like, I don't know, where they make Taco Bell hot sauce? No, not even close. It's named for the loco weed <gasps> that grew in the area. I cannot believe you chose this. It's plant of the pea family that is very dangerous to livestock. Loco weed is a big deal yeah. in Idaho, where my father lives. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and it's North Central Childress County. I bet Lauren Freeman knew where that was. She, Lauren knows everything, yeah. right? Okay, I think we're out of time, but the last one that I have is the town Nada. Nada? Nada. They don't have anything there. 
No, they don't. No, the town's name doesn't mean nothing like it does in Spanish. The name is adapted from a Czechoslovakian word meaning hope. Oh. So it means hope, not nope. Located on Highway 71, midway between El Campo and Columbus. Oh, well, you know what? I've actually, I've driven by that then. Yeah. How weird. Yeah. Okay, well, that was fun. We that have more names, so but fun. we don't have time for that. Maybe another day. I hope so. This was a lot of fun. Good job. Music. We were terrible at that. We were really bad. Yeah. Not that <laughs> oh, well. We got okay. out of points. Still to come, loud music, dogs in your yar yard, or rowdy kids next door. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I know. We are talking about bad neighbor stories. That's after the break. Do we have enough time for all of that? <laughs> Plus, Joe Sam is celebrating National Barbie Day by taking a look at what's probably the biggest collection of Barbies you have ever seen. Do some Life is back in just two minutes. See, they're in the box. What you know about me? Just let the people say. Well, you can choose where you live, but unfortunately, you can't choose your neighbors. Unless you're rich enough to buy up the whole block, right? Well, <laughs> studies show that when people choose to list their home for sale and move away, bad neighbors are often at the top of the list of reasons why they chose to leave. Oh, my word. I know. Can, well, I've had some good and bad neighbors in my time, so I understand this. People cite all kinds of things, from dogs constantly barking to people throwing their trash and even diapers over the fence into what? the backyard. Oh, yeah, it happens. You have bad neighbor stories too, right? I do. I mean, most of the, our neighbors are fantastic. Yeah. But woke, woke up one time with a wheelchair in our front yard. Remember that story? That was really weird. That's and convenient. Then a dog, a guy walking his dog, two dogs, and pooping on our front yard, and kept walking. And I came out with the poop bags. I think that is just. Uh, Clean up after your dogs, yes. people. Be a good neighbor. We've been getting some great comments from our viewers. Let's jump right into those. We're hearing from Christine. She was waiting for a large rug to be delivered to her house, got a notification it was delivered. Um, they delivered it to the neighbors instead. So check this out. Husband goes over to the neighbors, points to the rug. It's in the neighbor's foyer. No. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't receive it? Yeah, he pointed to it, said, that's my rug. The neighbor sheepishly retrie retrieved it, handed it over. Oh, my oh, word. That's just stealing. Yeah. Okay, Bonnie writes in, my neighbor came to ask me if we would mind splitting the cost of a new shared fence after she began knocking it down. I had let my dogs out, and they almost ran into the street without any protective barriers. We paid nothing. Uh, good for you, Bonnie. Yeah. I wow. Know. Okay, we do want to hear from you. There's tons of comments already on this about the most awkward or maybe unneighborly thing that has happened to you. Head over to the Houston Life Facebook page, share your stories, and then just get some popcorn and start reading because the comments are pretty good. Yeah, unbelievable. All right, keep those comments coming. And today, the iconic Barbie doll, as we said, celebrates her 62nd birthday after making her debut in 1959. Yeah, and Joe Sam is in Umble at the home of a huge Barbie fan who's also a member of the the Houston Doll Society. She says she's been collecting Barbies for more than 25 years. Joe, I can imagine hundreds, if not thousands. How many are we talking? Over 2,000, Derek and Courtney, and we're not going to be able to do too much moving because we don't want to lose out the signal, but if you just can imagine how beautiful this room is, I have Cheryl with me right now to talk about this here. There are so many Barbie dolls in here. You just showed us the one, the very first one that you collected when you started collecting so many years ago, the Rapunzel doll. Talk about this amazing room. When we walked in, I just could not believe it says we're walking into Barbie Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, like you said, I've been collecting since November of 1995, and in that time, I've uh, amassed more than 2,200 dolls. And so what got you into collecting so many Barbies? Because we know they bring so much excitement and, and so much comfort to those young girls and some young boys as well. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about collecting some of these. We see some ballroom dancers in here. You have them all organized in certain different styles and categories, too. Right, right. I try to... Uh, organize them according to uh, whether they're Christmas Barbies, Halloween Barbies, ballerina Barbies, angel Barbies, bride Barbies, um, mermaid Barbies, uh, 
that kind of thing. Absolutely. It's a great story that comes with each one of these different Barbies because mm -hmm. they come from different ca careers and, and different styles. And right. I just want to say, many people have those walk-in closets <laughs> here. You dedicated this entire room to Barbies. And if we can show you around, I want you guys to head over to social media on our Houston Life Instagram page because we are going to show you just how incredible this room is as it wraps around. And when we come back, Cheryl, you're going to be showing some really rare Barbies that you've collected over the years, correct? Yes. One of a kind, I'm here. One of a kind. One of a kind and handmade. We're going to be showing you that, too. This is a big Barbie fan, and we can just not say how excited we are to be in here. Courtney and Derek, we're one of the biggest Barbie fans here in Houston <laughs> and a member of the Houston Doll Society. Really incredible stuff. Absolutely, Joe. Thanks so much. Looking forward to seeing the rest. Well, coming up, Derek and I love shopping small, and we're sharing two of our four obsessions, including the perfect accessory to add a pop of color to your wardrobe. Looking forward to that, but right now, let's check in with Lauren Kelly with more on the new Netflix film based on a book written by that Bel Air High School teacher we had on Houston Life yesterday, Lauren. That's right, all these local ties ahead. Hadley Robinson and Alicia Pasquale Pena from the Netflix hit movie Moxie are chatting with me. What it was like working with Amy Poehler in front of and behind the camera for this new coming of age film. Houston Life will be right back. Well, our monthly series of Houston Life Obsessions continues, and today we are featuring brands of clothing, accessories, and my favorite go-to canteen to keep my drinks hot or cold all day long. Absolutely. On the rocks, if you will. <laughs> yeah. And if you love these products as much as we do, we do have some discount codes for you as well. And by the way, we are not paid. We are not compensated by these companies. These are simply products that we want to share with you, and we're so excited to really shine a spotlight on these local brands as well. And you're up first. Okay, Corksicle, you've probably seen them around. Big fan. Do you remember when the water bo bottle craze started happening a few years ago? Yeah. It's like everyone had a new cool water bottle. Well, this water bottle, that's actually my Corksicle 25 ounce in my car. I know it sounds like a simple thing. It fits in the cup holder. Hello, and hallelujah. <laughs> so it's great design because it has this tapered base. But just check out some of the fun colors. You should so check cute. out Corksicle.com or their Instagram. And one of their missions is to take these mundane daily activities like drinking water, make them more interesting. So their drinkware can help you reduce your personal impact on the planet, help eliminating uh, the need for single-use products. You know, the last thing we need is more plastic bottles out there, right? So canteens, tumblers, stemless wine cups, mugs, tumbler straws, even a new kid's cup. Best of all, every purchase of Corsicle products helps bring clean water to those in need by funding clean water projects around the world, places like Ethiopia, Nepal, Bangladesh, Cambodia. And uh, you can buy them locally at, like, Cool Linscombe carries yeah. them at Alabama and Kirby. But if you want to go online to Corsicle.com, they've got a 15% off code just for Houston Life viewers, use the code NBC15 to receive your 15% off. That code does expire at the end of the month. And again, I know it's a water bottle. Why not look good drinking it? Absolutely. And, and I love the kids' cup. So cute with the straw in there. I love it. And love when it, you're dressed it. up ready to go into the boardroom, take uh. something that matches you know your outfit your outfit absolutely and speaking of outfits and good accessories i'm sharing with you confettis now this is a curated shop based in sugarland and i became hooked because of that queso tank right on the end from our tiger king music video i mean I everybody that. every good woman needs a queso <laughs> tank right now this perfectly curated shop features exclusive handmade bags custom designed apparel basically bright happy accessories and the bags are made in mexico by talented artisans you can see some of those right Beautiful. there i take mine on the plane to the farmer's market oh, wow. to baseball games to the pool they're fantastic and all of the teas that you see and i love that little wristlet too all of the tees that you see is designed in-house by Boss Mama M Meredith, who is the owner of this great company. So there's the Tiger Tank, which is super cute. Um, and then she just came up with this um, Texas 
sweatshirt that she has right now because we all need a good Texas strong sweatshirt, right? And then the Madre tanks. There's also the Madre t-shirts. She has masks. She has everything. It's a great little happy. I've done these for girlfriend birthday gifts and things like that. It is just really great. Confettis does have a website. They also have a brick and mortar, but you can use code Houston Life to receive 15% off your order. The code is going to expire on March 31st, so think Mother's Day. Think anything you want to fill up that cart, add to cart, and save 15%. It's a fun and playful brand. I think it's super cute. Absolutely. I love it because she's all about bright colors, and she's right in Sugarland. Her Her things are really whimsical and cute. Very nice. Yeah. Confettis and Corksicle. Well, in the meantime, if you would like to uh, check out some of the products, as a recap, you can use code NBC15 at Corksicle.com and then the code HoustonLife at Confettis.com to receive 15% off your orders. Both co codes are good through the end of the month. Absolutely. I'm going to order my Corksicles right now. Stay tuned. We've got more obsessions to share, including a favorite of mine that I have to be wearing right now. And also, it's a must-have men's clothing line. I know you love it. Orlando loves it. Just in time for spring break. And I happen to be wearing that right now. We'll have more on that in just a bit. Now on to something else we love, the new Netflix film Moxie. Yesterday we met the Bel Air High School teacher who wrote the book the film is based on. And today Lauren Kelly is chatting with two stars from the coming of age film. Hi Lauren. Hey guys. Well Moxie is about a shy 16 year old who publishes an anonymous magazine calling out sexism at her high school which then sparks a school wide coming of rage revolution. Hadley Robinson and Alicia Pasquale Pena star in the Amy, Fo uh, Amy Poehler directed film and they're chatting with me about the importance of making your voice heard. Mom, what do 16-year-olds uh, care about? When I was 16, all I cared about was smashing the patriarchy and burning it all down. Girls constitute a revolution. Well, Moxie is about a, a young girl who starts a feminist revolution in her high school after she's displeased by some of the behavior of the boys around her and the harassment, the double standards. Um, and she feels inspired by her friends and the people she loves to uh, stand up for what she believes in and use her voice. Good morning and welcome to the revolution. Bam! Oh, no, please tell me that you did it. Yeah, duh. You like it? <laughs> Yo, I took this picture and I started the hashtag Moxie Girls Fight Back. But they're more of us than you think. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Do you have any kind of similar experiences to your character Lucy in, in high school when you went? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I was blessed with the opportunity to viscerally connect with Lucy. Uh, almost everything that she experiences, I can personally connect to because I went through it myself. You know, whether it was arguing uh, with an entitled, privileged man in class uh, to the point of being so impassioned that I would have to leave, or, um, you know, curating petitions or being a part of marches, whether it was, you know, March for Your Lives or women's marches, you know, I, I connect with Lucy in so many ways. And, um, it, it was an honor to play her because I was like, wow, I haven't seen a character like this on screen. And I felt like this was me and it, it was demonized for uh, to be outspoken and to be radical. So, yeah. Do you think it's a great movie for younger girls who maybe are in high school right now to watch and kind of be inspired by? We hope that everybody leaves the film empowered um, and more encouraged to use their voice uh, to call out injustice and, and you know, to speak their truth. We hope that everybody leaves the film feeling that way, but specifically young women, you know. Uh, it's a privilege to be a part of a cast with um, so many women that all look different and um, all are these beautiful, multi-dimensional women, but, um, you know, use their voice in different ways. Speaking of powerful women, I mean, Amy Poehler is right on up there with, you know, the highest of the high. Not only is she in the film as well, but she directed. How was it working with such a powerful woman behind the camera? It, it was incredible. Um, Amy is so smart and so creatively inclined, but she also is an activist at her very core. Um, and she also is a leader that's incredibly powerful and she's not afraid to use her voice, but she has this um, deep vulnerability, which she's not afraid to show, which I think is very, uh, you know, respectable. And um, yeah, I think we all looked up to her in major, major ways. Absolutely. Well, Hadley Robinson, thank you for joining us. Alicia Pasquale Pena, you guys are fantastic. I love that the film was released just in time, a female-led cast for Women's History Month. And so we love that. We love that here at Houston Life. Thanks, girls. Have a good one.
Thank you, Lauren. Have a great day. Moxie is currently streaming on Netflix, and you can catch more of my interview with Hadley and Alicia at HoustonLife.tv. Courtney and Derek, there's such a great rest of the cast as well. Marsha Gay Harden's in it, yeah. Ike Barinholtz. It's a really great movie. Just loved it. Very nice, Lauren. Thanks okay. for that. Sure. Okay, guys, coming up, how to incorporate spring clean style into your home all year round. We're going to get an expert in interior design and a few tips coming up. And we'll get a check of what's ahead on KPRC 2 News at 4 when Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. I'm Courtney along with Derek on this Tuesday and a good talker on social media today. Oh my gosh, so many responses about bad neighbors. <laughs> Let's take a look at what you had to say about today's question. Earlier we were chatting about those bad neighbors, so we asked what's the most awkward or unneighborly thing that has happened to you? The comments have been pouring in. Greta writes, I met one of my neighbors as I opened my garage door one morning as he was walking his dog, letting him go in my front yard. Mm, good morning. Wow. <laughs> and also Linda writes, Writes in, we were having our son's high school graduation party in our backyard, and our neighbor started spraying his hose <gasps> over the fence into our yard. Uh, uh, what? Horrible. That is unbelievable. Okay, keep wow. them coming. Tiny writes in, having fireworks on a Sunday night when it's not a holiday. I asked them nicely to stop because I had to go to sleep and work in the morning. They said no because they were having fun. Luckily, it started raining, and they had to stop. I mean, why are people so inconsiderate? So inconsiderate, so entitled. Can you imagine lighting fireworks off? <sighs> Horrible. 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 There are so many stories that I could tell, but I'm not going to. Here's the thing. I am a, now a dog owner, so when I when Oscar poops on someone's, you know, I'm picking you it clean, up. Of course you do. But I'm not do. walking it up, walking him up to his front yard, you know, their front door. I mean, I stay on the curb, you know, closer to the street. Pick yeah. it up. I mean, I always have poop bags with me. Some people will just let their dogs out of the side door, or the front door, let them go do their business, and then come back and Remember not clean that's it up. Remember that time I met one of my neighbors it's, doing that? That is so not yeah. cool. That is majorly bad karma. And now everyone has security cameras, so they're going to catch you letting your dog they're out. They're going to see it happen. Who let the dogs out? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was Bob down the road. <laughs> All right, let's check in with Andy, Lauren, and Frank with a look at what's coming up in the news at the top of the hour. Hey, guys. Hey. Am, am I in the minority? I mean, I love my neighbors. I do, too. I don't we have, have any horror stories. Oh, yeah, we lucked out. I've One just had my, bad neighbors in the past. That's why we won't move because well, we love our neighbors. One of my neighbors stole my trash can once. We left <laughs> it out like, you know, they picked it up at like 9 a.m. and we left it out till like 3 in the afternoon. So she stole it. So we we're pretty sure she had it. So my mother-in-law watched her raise her... <laughs> garage one day and our trash can was in there. Oh, so my, busted. My mother-in-law went back and took it. Oh, oh, I love it. I love wow. it. But very bizarro. So weird. As it's if she true. weren't going to get caught? I know. I Yeah. You can call 311 and get another one. <laughs> I know, but I wanted mine back. Not your, but she could, is what I'm saying, if she needed yeah. one. Oh, she didn't need one. She just wanted to She just needed yours. Oh, she my just word. wanted to show yeah. me, not to leave it out for an extra three hours. <laughs> At least hours. she didn't ask you to autograph it, Lauren. <laughs> no, I, I don't think she was interested in an autograph from me, frankly. <laughs> was she in the corner hugging it? Maybe it's more of a... <laughs> <laughs> she was sniffing it. Oh, All right. yeah. Let's get over to no. Frank. Yeah, I'm ready for the... about our, our weather, and I hear the humidity's creeping back up. Is that true? I'm ready for the Facebook question. Is be How are your neighbors who are on TV? Oh. No, we're not going to do that one. We don't want that You were the guy of the fireworks, right? We don't want that one at all. was <laughs> you. We get noticed too much. All right, Abacus camera, look at that. It's nice. The humidity's trying to creep up, but there's still a really strong breeze out there, so that certainly helps not only with the humidity as well as the fog. 20, 21 mile an hour wind, 16 in Galveston, but temperatures right there in the mid and upper 70s. You have 74 in Tomball, 73 Conroe with a 20 mile an hour wind. It's going to be a nice one. If you're headed out to walk the dog or take a jog, 76, 75, right there at 72 at 6 and 69 at 7. So the wind is because of this high and that low. That's going to continue. I don't think that's going to change much as we go into the next couple of days. What we're watching is not so much that low, but this one here that's still right off of California. That low in front, that's headed into California, and that will be our weekend system that we're going to have to watch closely for Sunday. We'll talk more about this at 4 o'clock. It's going to continue to get warmer each day. Coastal and bay fog with the wind. I don't think it'll be too serious for most of us, but I'd watch there at Galveston and then severe weather Sunday is certainly a possibility. I'll show you all the models coming up at four.
All right, Frank, thanks so much. Here's a look at some of the stories that we are covering for you this afternoon. The statewide mask mandate in Texas ends at midnight. Coming up at 4, how local businesses plan to enforce their own face covering rules and how they're training workers to react when customers don't comply. Plus, some troubling news regarding last month's Arctic blast. We know a lot of people were left without power and many suffered damages from busted pipes. Today, we're learning of another impact, industrial pollution during the winter weather. KPRC2 investigator Joel Eisenbaum is on that case. Also at four, two dogs belonging to President Biden's family have been removed from the White House. Why they're being transported back to their home in Delaware. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, inquiring right. minds want to know. So we'll have yeah, those I'm, stories and more coming up at mm -hmm. 4. It sounds good. It, I'm curious because they said there was a little incident, so uh, maybe we'll learn more this afternoon. Hmm. Bad right, neighbors. <laughs> maybe they didn't like the neighbors. Maybe that's it. Good one, Frank. We'll see you guys at 4 o'clock. <laughs> All right, so with the ongoing pandemic, many of us have been spending a whole lot more time at home over the past year, so why not update your house with a bit of spring cleaning? People dread it. But there's a smarter way to do it, Courtney. Absolutely. I hate every inch of the house after you've seen it all year. You haven't gone anywhere, right? Have no fear. Principal designer Pamela O'Brien is here with interior design tips to help keep your home sanitized and stylish all year round. Welcome back to the show. Great to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. And I agree. Cleaning is not my favorite thing. <laughs> and if you all think back about a year ago, we were scared. I was personally cleaning my counters three and five times a day, and, and it, there's only a, the one other person in my house. But being clean is really important, and I think this is a design trend that's not going to go away. And technology is our friend. I have a few tips for you. Okay. All right, well, let's get started. Yeah, and this yeah, first okay. trend, well, so the first you know, one is I love this. I'm sorry? No, well, the clean yeah. look, this is the first trend. It's clean, it's sleek, it's minimal, right? Absolutely. Well, having less in the house makes it easier to keep up with it, for sure. Secondly, you'll find some of your appliances will do the work for you. There's something called the National Sanitation Foundation, NSF. And if you remember those three letters and you see those logos on your dishwasher or your washer or your dryer, you will have sanitation cycles available. So that is a great tip. I found it was much easier to just put the dishes in for a little longer, hit that button and feel really, really comfortable with them. Another thing is your countertop surfaces. Those were the areas that we were most worried about keeping clean in kitchens and bathrooms. And if you use one of the popular materials today, quartz, you can choose a high quality quartz that has what we call non-porous properties. What we're looking for is a dense, dense material that keeps the dirt and the germs on top. So you can simply wipe it off. And I'm showing, you, I'm showing you right now a couple of really pretty options. So you can see you don't have to sacrifice beauty for safety. You can have a super dramatic look with that black with the white veining. You can have one of the other beautiful gray and white looks, or you can have that little bit more dramatic granite look in the back. So every home can look great and you can keep it really, really clean. That is, it, it, I mean, I would imagine updating, though, that area would be kind of costly for a lot of people. And, and right now, I think so many times we have now rediscovered our outdoor spaces during this last year um, because that was really going out, right? And so you say you can extend that outdoor. Going outdoors was, the new, new, I think, the new going out for almost all of us. And, you know, the nice thing, you made a really good point, is you didn't have to invest a lot. Some people are upgrading their summer kitchen. Some people are putting in a pool. Other people simply bought a little bit more outdoor furniture so they could put more people outside. We started eating, grilling, cooking, entertaining, even just within our own family, lounging and playing outside more than ever. And so a few upgrades, maybe a new mat at the door, maybe a little bit of a rug to make your outdoor living area feel a little bit more like a living area. Those are very economical, very easy to do. We could order them, they could be shipped to our house, and we'd have a really fresh, pretty new outdoor living space. And for, for people, Pamela, who are not intending to, you know, spend any sort of budget on actually like renovating their home, where should we begin if, if we're sitting at home and we're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed by some of the clutter? Are there simple tips or is, is there a simple thing that someone could do this afternoon to just improve their mental well-being at home? 
My hands down favorite tip is if you have either a surface, like say a countertop or the desk behind me, or if you have bookshelves, take everything off, think about what you need, and very strategically just place a few things back. You'll be surprised how much better your same stuff looks when there's less of it. Less is more, absolutely. Well, Pamela, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for our spring clean style tips. And you can find all of Pamela's design tips on our website of HoustonLife.tv. And HL Obsessions is coming up next. Yeah, we're going to reveal two of our favorite products, including a comfortable men's line that will stay wrinkle-free all day long and a customizable jewelry line you can even work out in, Courtney. I Houston know. Life will be right back. Earlier in the show, we revealed two of our obsessions, and now we've got two more for you, and you're up first. I'm so excited to showcase Mizzen and Maine. So this brand needs to be part of every man's wardrobe and toolkit. So you know Houston, it warms up, it gets hot and humid, so people sweat through their dress shirts and suits. I can't tell you the number of times I've had huge pit stains. That's where Mizzen and Maine comes in. High performance dress clothing for men. There's JJ Watt on the wall. He's a brand ambassador. So it's headquartered in Dallas. Comfort, flexibility, classic or slim fit. They have two lengths of dress shirts. So if you don't want to tuck in your shirt, you can do the untucked um, length. Moisture wicking, machine washable, four way stretch, wrinkle resistant. It is so low maintenance. Dry cleaning has chemicals. Yeah. It's expensive. It takes time to drop it off, pick it back up. This brand will keep the color, the shape, the brand new look straight out of the dryer. And Courtney, the outfit that I am wearing today, I'm just going to step out to the side. This is head to toe, Mizzen and Maine. It I have, is not. I head to my, toe? Yeah, I have my mic packs on the back, so you can't really, you know, see the shape very well. Right. The blazer, the dress shirt, the pants. And get this, I had a shoot this morning mm -hmm. for Bayou Greenways. I rode my bike this morning in this outfit six miles. Love it. And, and I came to work. And not a wrinkle to be had. Not a wrinkle. I didn't steam it. I didn't do anything. I came straight to work from that six-mile bike ride. And folks, I'm telling you, you'll love it. You should get some for Orlando. He has a shirt. We do have a promo code, right? Oh, we certainly do. So if you go to their brand-new store in the Heights location, across from Local yep. Foods, ask for Ashley or Trey or Rob. Just mention Houston Life. For every purchase over $125, you get 25 bucks off. Worth the investment. And think about how much money you'll save on dry cleaning. Fantastic. I'm a huge fan. Big fan. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, I am a big fan of this line, Casual Carrots. I'm wearing the rings right now. Why is this such a big deal? These are silicone rings. This oh. was kind of a big deal for like um, to work out in, right? Yeah. But these are blinged out silicone rings. So you can add diamonds. You can add a, a gold heart, a silver heart. This is created by a local mom. She grew up in a family of jewelry designers and um, her family's jewelry business is right in Rice Village. She said after seeing so many rings damaged from wearing to the gym, carrying luggage, vacation, mm -hmm. losing diamonds, you know, whatever, that's where she came up. She saw this void in the jewelry industry. These silicone rings, they come in 23 different colors to choose from. Diamonds come in three sizes and three different colors. Again, there's everything from, you know, there's even a, an evil eye, a Mati, as I like to call it. The evil eye um, right here. Here is, um, where's the, let's see. I don't know. I can't see the pink heart. Looks like there's a little heart. Yeah, it's oh, right, right up here front. in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's without the diamond. That's just a metal. But you can also do stackables. You see how I'm wearing mine with the stackable kind of roped silicone on there. So cool, you guys. It's great for vacation swimming. You don't need to take your, um, your fancy rings. Or I did talk to somebody. She's like, I've lost my diamond so many times. I'm now going to wear this all day every day and it's such a cool thing hl promo code for casualcarrots.com you can use houston life for 15 percent off your order it is um, excluded from the discounts that are gold and stackable bands um, but the code expires on uh, march 23rd so get yourself some casual carrots very clever great for working out too i love yeah. the look it's so cool i love that it's 23 different colors too in the silicone rings okay so the recap casual carrots and mizzen and maine you can visit the Mizzen and Main store in the Heights. Mention Houston Life to get $25 off any purchase over $125. Bucks. 
That sale, Courtney, is uh -huh. good through the entire year. Ah, so you can keep shopping. Yeah, you can, and you can use code HoustonLife at CasualCarrots.com to receive 15% off your purchase. That code, again, is good for two weeks. And again, we do want to remind you, we are telling you about things we love and want to share with you. We are not paid or compensated by these businesses. They are just all simply products we love supporting and love shouting out our small businesses. Make sure to check out our website if you would like to shop from any of today's featured small businesses. Okay, very nice. Now let's check in with Joe Sam, who's living in a Barbie world this afternoon. Hey, Joe, how's it going out there? Yeah, we are definitely in the Barbie world, Courtney Derrick. When we come back here, we're going to be showing you Cheryl, who is a Houston Doll Society member, some of her one-of-a-kind Barbies that you can see here. Beautiful, beautiful Barbie dolls, all handmade. We're going to be showcasing that to you when Houston Life returns. Make sure you stay with us. Hey, welcome back here to Houston Life. We're celebrating Barbie's birthday today, and I'm celebrating with one of her biggest fans, a member of the Houston Doll Society. Cheryl, you're here to talk about some of your one-of-a-kind <laughs> Barbies, and these are beautiful. Let's go ahead and get started right into it. You want to talk about the first one that you collected, which is right over here, right? Yes. I got her in 2012. Wow. And what does she symbolize? Because she has this beautiful dress on. You talked about these dresses are actually handmade as well for these Barbies. Yes. Uh... The one-of-a-kind doll artists that do these do it all by hand. And uh, the theme for that, uh, I got her at Barbie convention at the live auction was for charity. And the theme was um, the Grand Tour. Mm. But her name is Amore Mio, which means my love Wow! in Italy. Over 2,000 Barbies that you've mm -hmm. collected. These are all one-of-a-kind, beautiful, hand-painted Barbie mm -hmm. dolls here. Why is Barbie so special to a lot of people? Because you have a whole society that's dedicated to celebrating Barbie. Well, our club, we meet, and we share our love of Barbie doll collecting. And uh, not everybody collects uh, one-of-a-kind. Sometimes they collect vintage dolls. Mm -hmm. Starting in 1959, the, the real, they're very uh, expensive too and uh, some people collect uh, Playline dolls or just the modern dolls. Yes, and you have insurance on all of these dolls too because oh, we yeah. already know Security. that they cost a pretty penny. <laughs> you can even see this one here which was inspired by Chihuly if you guys ever seen the beautiful Chihuly sculptures. Really beautiful dolls here and people can go and check out the Houston Doll Society on Facebook and you guys also have an email that they can check you out or if they need more information about joining how can they do that? What's the email? The email is HoustonDollSociety at gmail.com Cheryl, thanks for having us here in your beautiful home with these amazing Barbies. And we want to go ahead and send things back to you, Courtney and Derek, by saying happy, happy birthday, birthday, Barbie. Barbie. Oh, happy birthday, <laughs> Barbie, indeed. We assume we're collectively saying that. You're not calling us Barbies, is that right? <laughs> thanks, it's a Joe. big giant wish. After the break, <laughs> a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a way to shop and give back to our furry friends. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Nichelle. Hi there, Derek and Courtney. Tonight on ET, more royal fallout from Harry and Meghan's tell-all with Oprah. Plus, Jared Leto shares details about his project with Lady Gaga. It's going to be a big show tonight. You don't want to miss it. That is tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now, stay right there. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow in Houston Life, I'm uncovering a shopping hidden gem. If you love trendy name brands but don't really love the retail price, I'm going to take you to a thrift store in town with a mission to help animals. Oh, that's super cool. And we continue spotlighting women throughout the month of March with the story of a woman bringing the opulence of Indian culture and cuisine here to Houston. Let's now take another look at what you had to say in response to our question of the day. Earlier in the show, we were discussing bad neighbors, so we asked you, what is the most awkward awkward or unneighborly thing that's happened to you. And these comments are unbelievable. Michelle writes in, my neighbor stole our water and electricity by putting the hose and extension cord oh. over our fence when we were gone. Oh Flat out gosh. stealing. What is wrong with people? 
Okay, Christine writes in, my neighbor hated trees on our property so much that she tried to have them cut down, then had her property surveyed three times to try and say they were on her property, then had them trimmed on my property. Oh. When none of that work, every fall, she would blow the fallen leaves onto our property. We moved and don't miss her a bit. Yeah, and Christine, if you could just send me your neighbor's address, I'd love to send her a, a sweet little note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. A reminder, too, that all of the obsessions we featured on today's show, you can find those discount codes on our website, HoustonLife.tv. There's some good ones today. Absolutely. I'm going to get ready to shop. Do we drop Add to Cart, if you will? Add to Cart. Can you believe I rode my bike in I this suit? I think it's so awesome, and I love the fact that the pants don't wrinkle. Uh, none of it does, but I think the pants are the big thing. And when you sweat, it doesn't show through. Mm. So those big, wet, pit-stained dress shirts, a thing of the past. Thing of the past. Thing of the past. All right, Andy and Lauren, we're going to send it on over to you in Studio A. No one wants to be all sweaty, right? Uh, no. Never. <laughs> no. I'm glad to hear those are a thing of the past.